The German army during World War II was seen as the one of the most effective combat forces that the world had yet seen. However, as war drags on, the lack of manpower in the state starts to affect the armies, and men are drafted into service that are once considered unfit for the army for one reason or another. The German state had such a group of people, much like the British Home Guard in 1940, a German militia was raised in a desperate attempt to stave off its enemies from the west and east, the Volkstrom. The Volkstrom came to be in 1944, after a request for 6 million men were ordered out. They had technically existed since 1925, but were little more than an organization on paper rather than an actual force. The propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, tried to paint the creation as a massive swelling of nationalism and drive for the German state, which was further instilled by being under control of SS members or Nazi party officials. However, they were normally under Wehrmacht command during combat. However, the state of these individuals did little to improve the morale of troops on the front line, and the decrepit state of these militia members showed the desperation of the state to the troops. The units were organized into battalions of 642 men each, with each Kreis, i.e. county, being charged with mobilizing one. Most of the individuals conscripted were largely drafted from the elderly, teenagers, and other individuals previously seen as not fit for active service. By February of 1945, young women were drafted into the Volkstrom as well. Heinrich Himmler was in charge of equipping the militia units with both arms and uniforms. However, the supply situation in regards to both were normally horrendous. Many of the militia members were issued black armbands that were put on over approved civilian clothing. Later on, some standard uniforms were given, and some members were even able to get proper army uniforms and steel helms, but they were a rarity. The arming of these new troops were in many ways even more scarce. Some Car 98s were issued, as well as Gewehr 98s and 71s, as well as Steyr Monnickers. The militia was supposed to be armed from both the SS and the Wehrmacht, but both had very little to spare. What were plentiful, though, were Panzerfaust, a single-use anti-tank weapon given to members of all ages, and the staple weapon of training when training was given. In combination to the Panzerfaust were captured enemy stores. The issue being, though, that most of these weapons took various ammo types and overburned the already massively struggling supply situation. Some weapons designed specifically for the Volkstrom were constructed, such as the MP3008 and the Volks pistol, among many others. Videos for details about some of these firearms will be in the description down below. In terms of training, it was rare for much training to be given to these new soldiers with weapons such as the Car 98 and the Panzerfaust. Some frontline soldiers acted as officers for these new units, while many older militia members were veterans from World War I with combat experience. Even still, however, most units that were sent to combat only managed to get familiar with their weapons as they were using them. The overall effectiveness of the Volkstrom is largely noted as being rather poor, although some units were very fanatical, and lasted until most of the men were killed or forced to retreat, such as in the battles around Kunzburg, Braslau, and Kohlberg. But against the armies of the Western Allies especially, the units would rather throw down their arms and surrender, not wanting to die needlessly. In the Battle of Berlin, the Volkstrom were used extensively, and many fought until the end, not wanting to be captured by the Soviets, while fanatic fighting was occurring in the capital. Large sections of the units, as well as regular army units, were surrendering en masse to the Allies in the West, seeing them as their only avenue for safety.